Hi friends, I'm back to read the next two chapters. The last chapter ended um, with Sam climbing the tree to see if he could find out where the fire was. Um, and it ended with the last branch is the one that almost kills me. So let's see what happens. Chapter 25, Home Sweet Home. Natalie's fighting with her father and being loud and rude. It happened so fast I can't hardly put it together in my head. I'd gone as high as I was going to go. Then I tried to stand up and my sweaty hands lost their grip. Next thing I'm on my belly, gripping the branch for dear life and struggling to catch my breath because the wind has been knocked out of me. Close call, way too close. I wrap my arms and legs around the branch and close my eyes and tell myself to be calm. A bad thing almost happened, but it didn't. Slowly the air comes back into my lungs and my heart slows down to something like normal. Sweat drips from the end of my nose, splashing on the pine needles one branch below. On the ground, at the base of the tree, Delphi shouts, Sam, are you okay? The whole tree shook. Sam! Sam! Takes a while to gather enough strength to reply. I'm okay. Just slipped is all. Delphi isn't visible. Too many branches in the way. But I can picture her expression as she shouts up. You better not fall, Sam. If you fall, I'll kill you. Understand? Promise, you, promise me you won't fall. I promise. Calm down, please. Probably I'd be as worried if she was up in the tree and I was on the ground, but there's no way I'm coming back down until I've seen whatever there is to see. So I gather my strength and tell myself it'll be okay as long as I'm super careful. And then very slowly I stand up, gripping the pine boughs to keep my balance. Imagine your head is a periscope rising just above the trees. So, periscope. That's a good um, vocab word. And a periscope would be like what would come out of a submarine. Um, and so, you know, it comes up and then it, you can look through it um, to see things above you. So it's kind of cool. One moment you're blind and then you can see for miles. And oh, what a sight. Can't wait to tell Delphi. I won't bore you with the climb down, other than to say it was about twice as hard as going up. Yes, I did slip a timer three, but never quite lost my grip, so that's all that counts. At the bottom, Delphi drops her stick and wraps both arms around me for a quick hug. You made it! What if you got stuck? It's not like I can call for a rescue. I didn't get stuck. But I did see the fire. Close. Not close at all. At least 10 miles away. Just barely visible above the horizon. Which was one of our old vocab words, wasn't it? Some of the smoke is blowing this direction, but the wind is settling down. So it's not spreading fast. Best thing, there's a lake or a pond a few miles from here. I saw buildings. Delphi, a bunch of buildings, a big shingled main building and lots of little white cabins. I'm pretty sure it's a summer camp. Are you serious? Her eyes are as big as Christmas morning, <clears throat> which means there has to be a real road nearby, right? To the supply camp. It's not like parents are going to hike through the woods to see their kids. This is so cool. The words catch in her throat. You said it's not far away? Maybe four or five miles as the crow flies. Too far to risk getting lost again in the woods. We'll have to follow the logging trail and hope it meets up with the real road. So what he's saying when he says that it's about four or five miles as the crow flies, meaning if you were a bird, and you were up above everything, all the trees, and you were flying to get there, you could get there in four or five miles. But because they're in a Jeep, 
they have to go around things. So it's take it will take longer. It's not a direct um, route. We might not make it before the sun goes down, but I'm a thousand percent sure this will be our last night without a roof over our heads. A thousand percent. <clears throat> More like a million percent. We're almost there, Delphi, I promise. You think the camp will have hot showers and real food and phones? She asks and then adds, Are there people there? Did you see the did you see cars? Eager to get going, I head for the jeep. As usual, Delphi matches me stride for stride, loping along with a big smile on her face and her dark eyes shining. I've never seen her so happy. It makes her look sort of beautiful in a dirt smudged, spent the night leaning against a tree coated with some kind of, with some, no, excuse me, coated with smoke kind of way. No, I didn't see cars or people. They're probably evacuated, but if it happened like at Camp Wabnaki, a lot of the food and water and maybe even fuel got left behind. The important thing, there has to be a road to get to the camp, a real road that leads to a bigger road that gets us to the highway. Phone chargers and hamburgers, civilization, Home, sweet home. Delphi sits up straight, shoulders back, ready for anything. I never knew what that meant. Not really, but now I do. We drive down the logging trail. Our luck has turned, and I'm feeling good about it. What an idiot. <laughs> Something bad must happen. Chapter 26, The Treehouse. As we lurch slowly along, avoiding potholes and tire-busting rocks in the fading light, Delphi has this fierce look on her face, like she wants to hold back the sunset. Like if she concentrates really hard, the sun will stay up long enough for us to find the summer camp. I feel rotten about it, but there's no way we're going to get there before the sun goes down. And we can't drive a rutted trail like this in the dark, especially with smashed headlights. No way. When, when I suggest that we may have to pull over and wait until morning, she takes offense. Are you serious? Sleep in this smelly little Jeep? In case you haven't noticed, I'm a big tall, I'm a big girl. Tall and big, remember? I barely fit in the seat as it is. And there's no room to stretch out my legs. Don't be mad. I slow the jeep to a crawl. Who says I'm mad? Really, that's what you think? She takes a deep breath. <sighs> okay, maybe a little bit mad. It's just my ankle hurts wicked bad, and I really, really, really need a hot shower. Soon, I promise, soon. One thing's for sure, I'm not sleeping sitting up. Not again. Not when there's a treehouse available. She must be joking. But then she points, and for the first time, I notice an enclosed platform built between two trees not far from the trail. Not a treehouse. Hmm. Make some guesses. What do you think it could be? I'm gonna let you, I'm gonna wait like I would in class. Okay, a deer stand. I bet some of you have been in one of those. The stand is nothing fancy, just a plywood platform, maybe 10 feet off the ground, and four canvas walls daubed for camouflage, which makes it hard to see. Hunters use it to spot deer. Part of an old aluminum extension ladder is tied to the platform with a piece of rope. Delphi goes first, and I hand up her backpack and then scramble into the thing. The floor is creaky and covered with old pine needles, but she's right. It's better than sleeping up against a tree or in the Jeep. We should pull the ladder up. Why bother, she says. Bears. She makes a face. You said not to worry about bears. I lied. We pull the ladder and tie it sideways to the edge of the platform. 
bears or no bears, this is sort of fun. She stretches out her long legs, like playing fort in the backyard. You played fort? Sure. Me and the twins. They pretend they'd, they'd captured the big friendly giant. The part where, the part, the best part was when I escaped and knocked down the fort, stomped it like Godzilla, which is way more fun than being the BFG. Then we'd put it back together and do the same thing all over again. Kids. Yeah, kids. I used to make forts when I was a kid too, and it was so fun. We never really made them in trees though. We would just do them like within the trees and lean boards up against the trees to kind of to make it. It was fun. I'm relieved her mood has improved. Plus we have cans of tuna and a full jug of water. May not sound like much, but when you're finished, famished and thirsty, it goes down like Thanksgiving dinner with all the trimmings. Or that's what we tell ourselves. So famished means starving. Turkey, mashed potatoes, and gravy. Mm, mm, mm. I'm doing my best Homer Simpson impersonation. Sorry, I couldn't do that. <laughs> Delphi laughs. It's full dark with no stars visible the, through the dense canopy of trees, so I can't see her face. But I know her mood has changed by the tone of her voice. You know what's weird? They probably think we're dead. My parents and your mother, my little sisters, all of our friends. They're planning our funerals, feeling sorry for the mean things they said to us. She pauses. I don't mean you. I'm talking about my so-called friends. Everybody says rotten things sometimes. It doesn't mean they're not friends. But you're right. My mom probably thinks the worst. She chuckles. That's so you, Sam. You're the one in bad trouble, but you're more worried about your mother. I almost tell her, then decide to hold it back. I don't want her feeling sorry for me, the pathetic kid with the dead father and the drug addict mom. Because it's not like that. I can't explain why exactly, but it's not. No idea how long it took to fall asleep, but when the first explosion hits, ah, lightning up in, lighting up the forest, I'm curled up in some scratchy old pine needles, and Delphi is screaming my name. My word, we have to wait till tomorrow? There are a lot of cliffhangers in this book, aren't there? This would be the part where you'd be begging me, no, no, don't stop, please read another chapter. But I'm not going to. See you tomorrow.